Hello, PG Tybotting here again. Welcome back to Modern Ace Basics. Today we're going to be looking at some elements of range and distance and how that affects considerations when you look at offense and defensive motions. Alright, so I've got my son Connell here. We're going to show you a little bit about some definitions. I'm just going to use some terms to define the ranges, but keep in mind that range is really a spectrum, right? We're really talking about how far away are you from the target, but there's some useful terms that you'll hear a lot and that are used a lot in Filipino martial arts. First off, if I can't hit any part of his body, that's out of range, okay? So that's a good place to be if you're defending, but if I'm attacking, it's not so good place to be. If I can't hit him easily, then I'm out of range. As soon as I move closer and I can hit that hand, now I'm hitting extremities and that's largo range. If I can easily hit his closer to extremities with the tip of my weapon, whatever that weapon is, that defines largo. If I just hit his body, you know, hit primary target areas, now I'm in medio range, okay? Even if, even if he's got a little bit of a guard and I'm gonna go in close, boom, and hit even the elbow, right? So I'm just defining these. So we go from out of range, so a Largo, I'm just barely hitting extremities, to Medio, where I'm hitting the primary targets. And then lastly, if we're doing Corto, if I come in here and I step in, Corto is gonna be I can hit with my Puno or the, the butt of my weapon or my fist of that same hand. Now, there's another way that you'll see people define Largo, Medio, and Corto. If we're extended and we can both barely hit each other's hands, that would be Largo. But if he goes on guard and doesn't move, I'm out of range for it right now. I have to do something to change that range. So these range terms are not terms of absolute distance, but they're terms of relative distance. They're relative to the target and the weapon that you're dealing with. The range goes from, he's on guard, I'm out of range, I'm in range at Largo, okay? Move to the side so I can get, now I'm medio, or medio, or even there's medio, or there's medio, there's medio, and then corto. I go in here, I've maybe he's locked me, whatever, and I come in, boom, I step in now, I'm corto, or I come in here and I, boom, I'm corto. All right, next, just to show you slightly differently, I'm gonna talk about then, I'd said before that it matters what weapon you're using, right? If I'm Largo with my long weapon, I'm out of range with my short weapon, unless I do something about it, and we'll talk about that in a second. But in general, I've got a long weapon, my Largo is right there. My Largo for this guy is not there. If I get to Largo and I hit his hand with my knife, then I can be in medio with the long weapon. So you can be at different ranges if you have different weapons. If I'm Largo here, I could be medio with my foot. Just because I have weapons in my hand doesn't mean I don't have other weapons, okay? Inside Corto, there's a lot of things you can do. So Corto could be headbutt, it could be elbow, it could be fist, it could be puño, all of those things. Again, though, it's a range. So it's, are you all the way up on him? Now, wherever you were in a Dugo, Dumog range, we're fighting. Um, or if we're just taking pot shots, right? He's on guard, wham! Chop that hand, ah, good. I might want to use this as an entry, right? I might come up here and go Largo, Largo, Medio, and fill, fill him up, right? Or I might go Largo in between, right? Control that and slash from Medio through Corto. So I'm playing with the ranges. Just because you're at Largo range with one of your weapons doesn't mean that you're at that same range with another weapon. You could be Largo with this one out of range, or you could be Largo with this one and be Medio, or Largo with this one and Medio with my kick, okay? What we're gonna talk about next is the angling and pivoting that will change some of your options. And again, it can apply for defense and offensive. But there's a couple things I'm seeing. I'm seeing him facing me. He's got his right hand facing towards me. His, his left hand's back. He's sort of covered up high. There's a few things, right? If I could go and just play Largo with the hand, that's easy. But if I want to get in and have targets open, whether it's for a poke or a strike, I have to move. What I can do is if, I'm, if, I'm, if we're facing like this and I step left and change and I step angle towards him, I can shorten the distance and now I'm at medial for him, right? So I've angled. It could well be that, that I step and I want to maybe tag him on the forehead, he blocks, but I can still punch him. So now <laughs> I became Corto with the side that was facing him. So what, how does that work? So he's, he's there and he's on guard. As soon as I step, this arm on this side has to travel a little further, okay? Once I pivot my body, this one arm gets reaches him. So 
there's two aspects that control your distance uh, with your ranging. One is angle and another one is pivot. If I have my stick out to the side and I pivot towards him, I'm pretty close. But if I pivot the other way, I barely have larga. And pivoting is key. So let's change the angle a little bit. If I'm just enough to reach him, I have a couple choices, right? I could go ahead and do that, pressure move in, pivot, and now I'm close in. Just a second ago, I was just barely at Largo, right? I was here. As soon as I move and I follow through and charge, I just have to take one step and I'm from, I'm out of range to corto with the hand, okay? And the reason I say corto with the hand is because if I just do that, I've got an elbow. So for me, on hands, corto and medio are about the same, right? It doesn't really matter what you call it. The point is you have to think about the ranges, how you get those ranges, how you control the ranges, and use those to your advantage. So this is all on entering and starting positions. Next we're going to talk about a little bit about defenses, okay? And that'll kind of give you a, a, a basic understanding of some of the ranges and how we think about them and use those in a dynamic manner. Thinking along those lines for defenses, let's have him attack me. So he's going to pick his range. Right now we're going to be we're going to square off and he's going to get to be where he can just barely comfortably reach my hand. So that's going to be Largo. Now if I don't do anything, he gets that hand no problem, right? One of my favorite things is to fade, to control the distance. What do I want to be? I want to be not near where he's going to hit, right? A great way to not be where he's going to hit is to go for his hand. So if he hits my hand, boom, right? So now he winds up again. He's going to hit my hand and I just go for his hand, I'm now faded away and not hit it. Either way, right, if I'm where I'm guarding, he hits that hand, and I fade and hit his hand. And he follows through, he's missed. Because he wasn't in medio, he couldn't hit me, he could just barely hit my hand. He's going for my hand, and I just hit his hand. He goes for my hand, I hit his hand. He goes for my hand, I hit his hand. Every time. Because he has to do an adjustment after he's already committed. So the nice thing is, he's committed to aim for that hand, and all I have to do is react and use my reflex, so in slow motion, He's hitting this hand, right? So he goes boom. This is the distance. He's hitting that hand in slow motion. I'm moving the hand out of the way and hit it. Okay? What do I do? He does again. I go whack. So all I do is I, the hand's moving out of the way and I just track his stick. That's easy. So if I back away, right, he's just going to keep following and charging me. So I don't want that. What I want him to do is look like he can hit, but all I did was fade it to the side and now I can hit it. The fact that him coming in, stepping in on me to get into his medial range for an attack means that he's also in my medial range. And the other thing that helps me there is this twist. So you notice I was here and I stepped to the side and he missed. Twisting my torso means I got that extra distance and I can hit his head, his shoulder, his elbow. More of a medial range, right? So he couldn't hit me anymore. He was out of medial range because I just faded to the side and he stays in my medial range. You can work that timing all day long, it's a great thing to do. What I'm trying to cover here today is some, some basic considerations, some theory, some distance definitions and things like that. But if you're good at visualizing, then you can work on some of this stuff or if you have a partner. But it's a great thing to do. You imagine the stick's coming in, I step to the side just a little bit, boom, he gets bumped. Okay? It works the other way too, it's a little harder. So he does this and he's, I do the same forehand strike. So I have to position myself. I did not step towards it. I stepped to the side. Lastly, there's a more uh, aggressive timing. So if he does a backhand strike, and before he finishes the strike, I jam it. Now we start getting into some blocking. But what I'm talking about here is he's had to come in and do a backhand strike and hit my head or neck. If I jam it before he's finished, that brings me into a good distance for him, and he is now off off kilter as far as managing his own distance because he's he was committed to doing this and aiming for the target right here as soon as I jam that so he winds up again as soon as I jam that that target is no longer available okay it happens on the forehand strike too wham okay my favorite thing is to follow that in okay he's winding up I follow it in just like he goes from my hand I follow it so good so anyway, just some, uh, just a short class today. I just wanted to get you some uh, exposure to some of the thoughts about range and distance and managing, and some of the things you can set up in your head as you practice these ranges. You can set this up with a tree. You can set it up with a wooden dummy, and practice your ranges. Practice what your twisting does. Practice what your angling and stepping does about where it puts you on the ranges. You might not always want to go for the hand, or maybe you want to go for the hand, but if I twist, I can get into the body. So play with what your steps do. 
what your angles do, what your rotation does, and, and start thinking about that even if you don't have a partner. All right, hope you like that. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you at the next one, probably defenses. Thanks.